Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Lamb Burrick. That's right, I'm gonna show you what I consider the king of all meat-filled phyllo pastries. And I say that not only because this tastes amazing, but even if you don't know what you're doing like me, it comes out looking incredible. And not just the outside, as the inside might even be more gorgeous. And by the way, this is one of those recipes that looks way harder to make than it is. Assuming, of course, you can get your hands on some decent frozen phyllo dough, which I didn't, which makes it much harder. But we'll get to my personal problems in a few minutes. For now, let's go ahead and get started with the filling, which we'll begin by adding a diced onion to some olive oil in a pan set over medium high heat, along with a very generous amount of salt. And then we will also at this time add our meat, which is gonna be two pounds of ground lamb. And then what we'll do is break that up with some kind of spoon or spatula into as small a pieces as possible, which is gonna take a couple minutes. And it's been my experience that the smaller meat crumbles you create now will make for a better texture in the final product. Because as you're about to see, we're gonna make what's basically a meat paste. And if you let these larger chunks cook and then try to break them up, it just does not work out quite as well. So we'll go ahead and spatulate that meat for a few minutes until we end up with something that looks like this. And then what we'll do once that's been accomplished is just let this cook for a while. And what's gonna happen is a lot of liquid is gonna come out of those onions and that's gonna start bubbling and everything's gonna look very wet, which is totally fine. But what we wanna do is continue cooking this, stirring occasionally until most of that liquid evaporates. All right, not totally. The mixture is still gonna be quite moist, but most of that liquid from the onions and a little bit from the meat will have evaporated off. And then once that happens and our meat kinda looks like this, we can go ahead and toss in the rest of the ingredients, which will include some finely minced or crushed garlic, some dried currants, or some chopped up raisins, which will have the same effect. And then we'll also toss in some lightly toasted pine nuts, as well as add in all our spices which since I'm getting a little smarter in my old age, I measured out ahead of time. And we'll go ahead and stir all that together and cook it for about one minute. And of course, I'm gonna list all those spices on the blog, but we are going with most of our lamb-friendly favorites, including cumin, coriander, cinnamon, freshly ground black pepper, paprika, a little bit of allspice, and there's one I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, cayenne. But anyway, like I said, we'll stir that together and cook it for about a minute before adding in some tomato sauce. Or if you want, just some pureed or crushed tomatoes. Okay, the only advantage with the sauce is that it's already seasoned. And then last but not least, we will add in a little splash of water that we will use to rinse out whatever we had our tomatoes in. And then what we wanna do when all this is stirred together is reduce our heat to medium and cook this stirring for maybe 20 minutes to a half hour or until it really dries up and turns into what I described earlier as a meat paste. And how you'll know you cooked it long enough is by giving it the old push and look. Okay, if we push our meat like this with the spatula, we should be able to see the bottom of the pan with no liquid filling in. Okay, if that fills up with juices, you're gonna wanna cook it a little longer until it looks like this. And that's it, once we've decided that's cooked long enough, we'll turn off the heat. And other than tasting this for seasoning, we'll simply let that sit and cool down completely before we use it. And yes, you can make this part way ahead. And then what we'll do once our filling is set is move on to make a very special egg wash, which we will do with one large egg, some plain Greek yogurt, the full fat version, by the way. And then we'll thin this out with a little splash of water. And we will finish this up with a couple spoons of melted butter. And that's it. We'll take a whisk and give this a thorough mixing. And once that's been accomplished, we'll grab our pastry brush. And we'll use this magical mixture not only to paint the top of our burek, but also, and more importantly, to moisten between the layers of our phyllo. Speaking of which, we're gonna need at least one package of thawed frozen phyllo dough, which as you know, once open, we always wanna keep underneath a damp towel so it doesn't dry out. And for your information, this was the worst package of phyllo dough I've ever bought. Or I think it might've thawed and got refrozen at the store, cause it was terrible and really fragile and cracking and frayed around the edges. So this was a little bit of a challenge to work with. But the good news is, while a little bit annoying, it still worked. But anyway, what we'll do is lay two sheets on the table, and then we'll proceed to very lightly moisten the entire surface by carefully brushing over our egg yogurt wash. And I think a good strategy is to sort of drip it here and there, and then distribute it around by lightly brushing. And yes, I will be speeding up the footage in certain spots, so consider yourselves warned. But anyway, we'll start with two sheets, and once that surface has been brushed, we will top that with one single sheet of phyllo, 
And we'll repeat that brushing process. And once that's set, we will top that with one more piece of phyllo for a total of four. And not only is this mixture adding flavor, but it's also much more importantly, gonna make our phyllo flexible so that we're able to roll it and shape it without it cracking. All right, if you just tried to do this with melted butter, like most phyllo recipes, it doesn't work. And the dough will split open and you'll have a huge mess, as I learned the hard way. So while this egg wash between the layers is a little bit unusual, it really is the key to this procedure. And then once we have that last sheet brushed, we can go ahead and spoon on our filling, about two inches or so from the edge. And I think we want to pile about two inches wide by two inches high. And we'll just get it close with the spoon and then do the fine tuning with our hams. And by the way, if you're not into lamb, this works perfectly with beef. Or you can do a vegetarian version with spinach and cheese, as well as many other things. So use what you want. I mean, you are after all the Lorax of your Burex. And as a famous doctor once said, this is not about what it is. It's about what it can become. But regardless of what filling we use, once it's been applied, we will go ahead and carefully roll it up. And while we want it secure, we don't want to roll this too tightly. So I'm not really pressing down too much. Okay, the egg wash is going to keep the dough flexible. But if we roll it super tight, it still might break open. So we'll use a little bit of a light touch and roll that up as shown. At which point we're going to transfer that into a well-buttered baking dish. And because I'm doing a spiral, I went with a round one. But you can also do this in a sheet pan. And then once that's been placed in, we'll go ahead and brush it with our egg wash. And then we'll proceed to make two more of those rolls, exactly like you just saw me do. And as usual with this stuff, we don't have to be too concerned with precision. Since once these bake, they almost always look awesome. Oh, and I should mention if you're really good at this, you can overlap a whole bunch of phyllo across your table and just make one really long snake that you then roll up and put in your pan. But having said that, at least for me, I think it's easier to just do two or three and piece those together as shown. Oh, and one tip here, for the second and third rolls, you should probably paint them with the wash before you try to place them in this pan. All right, just to make sure they're extra flexible. All right, not so much a big deal on the first one, but for the second and especially the third one, you'll probably want to give it a brushing before you try to roll it up tight. And then once all our rolls have been placed in and positioned, and of course generously brushed with our egg wash, if you have any holes to fill in, which I did because of my questionable placement, you can always just wad up a piece of extra phyllo and just stick it into the gap and then egg wash the top. And then one last thing once we're happy with how it looks. Before this goes in the oven, I like to sprinkle over some sesame seeds. Or if you want poppy seeds or a combination. But this time I'm just going with the sesame. And then once our surface has been seeded, that is ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes or until it's beautifully browned and looking like one of the greatest things you've ever seen food or otherwise. And sure, you might have some lamb juices that have bubbled up here and there, but don't worry, that's all part of the show. And those will recede and settle down as this cools. Which reminds me, we should probably let this sit for about 15 minutes or so before we attempt to cut a slice. So that's what I did. At which point I grabbed a serrated knife and cut myself a nice portion. And usually the first slice never comes out looking that great, except this time it did. I mean, look at that. This thing really does have one of the most unique and interesting appearances ever. And then because this is kind of a rich dish, I went ahead and garnished the plate with some bitter greens, also known as the ubiquitous baby arugula. And that, my friends, is one of the most delicious, most fascinating to look at things you'll ever eat, which is why I'm gonna grab a fork and dig in. And the combination of that beautiful, rich, savory, aromatic, luscious lamb, surrounded by that crispy, flaky phyllo, is just an absolutely perfect pairing. Oh, and I almost forgot. While this really is fantastic eaten as is, I do like to serve it with a little bit of a yogurt sauce, featuring some freshly chopped mint. And of course, that recipe will be included in the blog post as well. But anyway, that's it. My take on Lamberg, which I hear originated in Turkey, but I believe the spiral version is Bosnian. But I'm not sure. That's just something I heard from unreliable sources. But anyway, a magnificent recipe no matter where it's from. And with Easter coming up, if you wanted to serve lamb, which is very traditional, but you didn't want to spend the big bucks for a leg of lamb or a rack of lamb, this would be a great and much more affordable alternative. But no matter what the occasion, I really do hope you give this a try soon.
So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.